Learning how to make polenta is easy. Although you probably think of Italy when you think of polenta, it's actually also very common in Argentina and Uruguay due to the Italian immigration. Not only is it cheap, easy, and delicious, polenta is also an excellent gluten-free pasta alternative. Add a bit of sauce and a bit of cheese, and a bowl of polenta becomes a full meal. If you want my polenta making secrets, keep watching. And now I'm going to make my polenta. Here I have 500 grams of my homemade vegetable stock, along with a quarter teaspoon of salt and a dash of pepper. I brought it to a boil over medium heat, and here I have 100 grams of polenta, or three quarters of a cup. And as they say in Argentina, I'm going to put it into the liquid, la forma de chuvia. I'm going to put it in as if it were raining down. So instead of putting it all in one motion, I'm going to sprinkle it in the liquid. So like this. In. Going to start to stir. And you sprinkle it into the liquid, whether you're using stock, vegetable or chicken stock, or even beef stock, or milk, a combination of stock and milk, or even water. You sprinkle it in because if you just dump it in, then it's more likely that you will have a lumpy polenta. So now it's still over medium high heat and you want to continue stirring. So it's been about two and a half minutes and you can see that it's spitting. So now I'm going to turn it down to medium heat. And actually you might want to turn it down to medium heat before it starts to spit like that because even though I wear glasses, some of it spit up into my eye. So be careful. So it has now been seven minutes since I added the polenta. I've been stirring constantly over medium heat and it is now done. I'm going to turn it off. Keep stirring for 30 seconds just to make sure it doesn't stick to the bottom. And now it is time to serve. It's good that learning how to make polenta is so easy because polenta is one of the best gluten-free pasta alternatives. Top it with tomato sauce and cheese and you've got a full meal. If you're looking for pasta sauce ideas, try a tuco, an Argentinian bolognese sauce. The link to my recipe video will be below. And here I'm using milk. I have 500 grams of whole milk along with a little bit of salt and pepper half of a very small onion and one garlic clove. I'm going to remove that. And here, 100 grams of polenta. So, as before, I form the chuvia, like a rain. I'm going to put in the polenta. I'm going to start stirring. Instead of boiling fresh onion and garlic, another great way to make delicious polenta is by adding an eighth of a teaspoon each of salt, pepper, garlic powder, and onion powder. Give it a try. You'll thank me later. So at this point, it's been six minutes. It's almost done, probably just about another minute. I tasted it, and it's almost there, but just a little bit gritty. It's very important to keep stirring at this point because if you do not, then it will burn on the bottom very easily. So when it's almost done, make sure you keep stirring very vigorously. As you can see with the milk, I use whole milk. It's not quite as yellow as with the vegetable broth. I tasted it and it's definitely a little bit creamier. I would not use skim milk for this because I'm afraid that it would curdle, but if you want to try it out, let me know how it works. It's now been seven minutes. Give it a try. Polenta. It is done. Honestly, the hardest parts of learning how to make polenta 
is making sure that it doesn't burn on the bottom and that it doesn't get too dry. Whatever liquid you use to cook your polenta, I recommend having an extra quarter cup off to the side so that you can add it if you want your polenta to be creamier or if you think it's starting to burn. Here I have my bowl on the bottom. I'm going to put some freshly grated mozzarella. Now I'm going to do scoop the polenta into my bowl. People in Argentina, they like to put some on the bottom. They actually usually put a little bit more than that. Because then it will melt. Creamy polenta made with whole milk and topped with mozzarella and parmesan cheese. Like I said earlier, learning how to make polenta is really easy. In addition to being inexpensive and delicious, it's also a great gluten-free pasta option. Just like with a bowl of pasta, adding a meat sauce and cheese turns a bowl of polenta into a full meal. Although eating polenta in the winter is very common in Argentina and Uruguay, it's delicious any time of the year. Although making polenta is relatively simple, I did want to point out that cooking time can vary. Some recipes call for cooking the polenta for 20, maybe even 30 minutes, but as you can see, my polenta cooked a lot faster. I used stone ground polenta, so I thought that it would take longer to cook, but it didn't. Speaking of which, I've used quick cooking polenta in the past, and there is no comparison in terms of taste between that and this stone ground polenta. It's like comparing regular cornmeal with stone ground cornmeal. The stone ground just has so much more flavor, it's incredible. Stone ground polenta might not be available everywhere, so I'll see if I can put a link in the description box to where you can get it. Speaking of cornmeal, since I also specialize in southern cooking, you might be asking what's the difference between polenta and grits? One difference is the variety of corn used. Polenta is made with flint corn, while grits is made with dent corn. Polenta is usually made with yellow corn, while grits is usually made with white corn. Also, grits is usually made from hominy, corn kernels that have been treated with an alkali in a process known as nixtamalization. It is a process that was invented by the Aztecs and makes the nutrients in the corn more easily available to humans. Food history aside, this Argentinian polenta recipe is an easy meal without any quilombo. Thanks for watching. Please be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Also, for more information about this and other Argentine and Southern recipes, please visit my website parnaldechef.com. And of course, don't forget to follow me on social media. Once again, thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.